Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Bryce from Coin Chronicles. I hope you're doing well. Today we will take a look at some coins from the years 1870 through 1879. This will include six Indian head cents, one two cent piece, two nickel three cent pieces, a liberty seated dime, a liberty seated half dollar, and two Morgan silver dollars. We will look at each coin and important details such as grading, composition, mintage, and inflationary value or purchasing power of the time. Also, we will take a look at some of the history and events in the 1870s time period. First, let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1870 Indian Head Scent. The 1870 Indian Head Scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 3.11 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 5,275,000. The inflation value is 23 cents for the year 1870 and the numismatic values range from $80 in good condition up to $900 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now, we will take a look at the 1870 Indian head scent from my collection. So, as we take a look at this 1870 Indian head scent, we can see that it appears to be in pretty good shape considering that the words are visible and the head is clearly outlined. And as we turn the coin over to the back, we see similar wear. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of very good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1870 nickel 3 cent piece. The 1870 nickel 3 cent piece has a size of 17.9 millimeters and a weight of 1.94 grams. Its composition is 75% copper and 25% nickel. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 1,335,000. The inflation value is 69 cents for the year 1870 and the numismatic values range from $20 in good condition up to $195 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1870 nickel 3 cent piece from my collection. So, as we take a look at this 1870 nickel 3 cent piece, we can see that there is minor wear on the face, but everything is still clear and readable. Now, as we turn the coin over to the back, it looks like the details are clear as well, with outlines and some fine lines still visible. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of fine condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1871 two cent piece. The 1871 two cent piece has a size of 23 millimeters and a weight of 6.22 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 721,250. The inflation value is 49 cents for the year 1871 and the numismatic values range from $35 in good condition up to $325 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1871 two cent piece from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1871 two cent piece, we can see that the shield is very clear with fine details remaining visible and the wreath still outlined with clarity. Even the rim on this coin is not fully worn off with fine rim details along the edge of the coin. Now as we turn the coin to the back, we can see that the words are all clear and the wreath is outlined just as seen on the front. In my opinion, this coin is fairly rare to find in a condition like this and is a great example of a coin in very fine condition.
Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1872 nickel 3 cent piece. The 1872 nickel 3 cent piece has a size of 17.9 millimeters and a weight of 1.94 grams. Its composition is 75% copper and 25% nickel. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 862000 The inflation value is 74 cents for the year 1872 and the numismatic values range from $20 in good condition up to $250 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1872 nickel 3 cent piece from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1872 nickel 3 cent piece we can see the incredible details on the face of the coin with sharp outlines of the head, words, and rim edge only with a minor chip or dent out of the right edge. Now as we turn the coin over to the back, we can see that it too seems to be in the same condition as the front, with fine and sharp details in the Roman numerals and the wreath. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of extremely fine condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1873 Indian Head Scent. The 1873 Indian Head Scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 3.11 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 11,676,500. The inflation value is 25 cents for the year 1873 and the numismatic values range from $20 in good condition up to $325 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1873 Indian head scent from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1873 Indian head scent we can see that it certainly has some pretty heavy wear to the face of the coin as the details on the head have been worn off However, the date, the words, and the outline is all still clear. Now when we turn the coin over to the back, we can see that while the wreath and shield is worn, it is still outlined. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of about good to good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1874 Indian head scent. The 1874 Indian Head Scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 3.11 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 14,187,500. The inflation value is 26 cents for the year 1874 and the numismatic values range from $20 in good condition up to $250 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1874 Indian head scent from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1874 Indian head scent, we can see that the words and date are clear and easily readable and the head is outlined with some heavy wear of the fine details. Now as we turn the coin over to the back, we can see something similar to the front as everything appears to be outlined clearly, but wear has blurred the fine details. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1875 Indian Head Scent. The 1875 Indian Head Scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 3.11 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 13,528,000. 
The inflation value is 27 cents for the year 1875, and the numismatic values range from $20 in good condition up to $260 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1875 Indian head scent from my collection. So, as we take a look at this 1875 Indian head scent, we can see that there is quite a bit of wear on the face of the coin with words and a date that are hardly readable. And the head is just an outline. Now, as we look to the back, we can see the same thing. Basically, just outline shapes without any fine details. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of about good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1876 Indian Head Scent. The 1876 Indian Head Scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 3.11 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre, and the mintage was 7944000 The inflation value is $0.28 cents for the year 1876, and the numismatic values range from $35 in good condition up to $390 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1876 Indian Head Scent from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1876 Indian Head Scent, we can see that it certainly has seen better days as there is heavy wear to the face on the head, words, and date. The words and date are hardly readable and the head is blurred. Now as we look at the back, we can see the same thing. The outlines are blurred with no fine details. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of fair to about good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1876 S Liberty Seated Half Dollar. The 1876 S Liberty Seated Half Dollar was minted in San Francisco and has a size of 30.6 millimeters and a weight of 12.5 grams. Its composition is 90% silver and 10% copper. The designer was Christian Gobrecht and the mintage was 4,528,000. The inflation value is $13.98 for the year 1876 and the numismatic values range from $40 in good condition up to $800 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1876 S Liberty Seated Half Dollar from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1876 S Liberty Seated Half Dollar, we can see that the face of the coin has a clear date and a clear outline. However, details and fine lines are blurred or non-existent, but the rim details are still visible. Now, as we turn the coin over to the back, we can see the eagle and the shield still have some fine details within them, and the words are still clear. However, the words in the banner above have been worn off. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of good to very good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1877 Liberty Seated Dime. The 1877 Liberty Seated Dime has a size of 17.9 millimeters and a weight of 2.5 grams. Its composition is 90% silver and 10% copper. The designer was Christian Gobrecht and the mintage was 7,310,000. The inflation value is $2.85 for the year 1877, and the numismatic values range from $15 in good condition up to $250 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. 
Now we will take a look at the 1877 Liberty Seated Dime from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1877 Liberty Seated Dime, we can see that this coin definitely shows signs of wear. However, the date and the words are still readable, and the Liberty is outlined but heavily worn. Now as we turn the coin over to the back, we can see that the wreath and one dime has been worn heavily, but not completely rubbed off. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of about good to good condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1878 S Morgan Silver Dollar. The 1878 S Morgan Silver Dollar was minted in San Francisco and has a size of 38.1 millimeters and a weight of 26.73 grams. Its composition is 90% silver and 10% copper. The designer was George T. Morgan and the mintage was 9774000 The inflation value is $29.92 for the year 1878 and the numismatic values range from $36 in good condition up to $361 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1878S Morgan Silver Dollar from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1878S Morgan Silver Dollar, we can see that the face is quite detailed as the hair is hardly worn down at all and the leaves are still sharply detailed. However, the flowers at the high point have lost some intricate detail on them. There are some minor scratches near the ear. However, the background is quite flawless with minor wear and a luster remaining. Now as we turn to the back of the coin, we can see the clarity in the eagle, as the details on the wings are still sharp and lines on the talons of the bird are still fine and visible. Also, the breast feathers are still fine and sharp, indicating that the coin is in excellent shape. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of about uncirculated condition. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1879 Indian Head Scent. The 1879 Indian Head Scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 3.11 grams. Its composition is 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The designer was James B. Longacre and the mintage was 16,228,000. The inflation value is 30 cents for the year 1879 and the numismatic values range from $8 in good condition up to $140 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1879 Indian head scent from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1879 Indian head scent we can see that the face of the coin has average wear on the head, but the background is clean with no major scratches or dents. The words are clear and the head is outlined. Now as we turn the coin over to the back, we can see similar characteristics as the background is clean and the shield and wreath are clearly outlined with slight detail. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of very good condition. Finally, let's take a look at the characteristics of the 1879 Morgan Silver Dollar. The 1879 Morgan Silver Dollar has a size of 38.1 millimeters and a weight of 26.73 grams. Its composition is 90% silver and 10% copper. The designer was George T. Morgan, and the mintage was 14,806,000. The inflation value is $29.92 for the year 1879, and the numismatic values range from $26 in good condition up to $944 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition.
in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a look at the 1879 Morgan Silver Dollar from my collection. So as we take a look at this 1879 Morgan Silver Dollar, we can see that many details on the face have been worn down over the years, such as the fine details in the hair, the flowers, and the leaves. However, there are still clear outlines, and the words are all existent as well as the rim. Now, as we turn the coin over to the back, we can see that the eagle's breast feathers are well worn off, but the wings are still somewhat detailed, and the words are clearly readable, along with the detailed rim. If I were to grade this coin, I would give it a grade of fine to very fine condition. Now we will look at some of the history and key events in the 1870s time period from 1870 to 1879. In 1870, John D. Rockefeller incorporates Standard Oil, Virginia rejoins the Union, the Weather Bureau or National Weather Service is established, and the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was ratified, which granted African American men the right to vote. Also in 1870, the U.S. Congress created the Department of Justice and Christmas is declared a federal holiday in the U.S. along with New Year's Day, Independence Day, and Thanksgiving Day. In 1870, the rotating wheel can opener was invented as well as the feather duster. In 1871, the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871 was passed which established a new territorial government for the whole District of Columbia. President Ulysses S. Grant signed the Ku Klux Klan Act, which authorized Grant to declare martial law, impose penalties against terrorist organizations, and use military force against the Ku Klux Klan. Also, the whaling disaster of 1871 occurred which was an incident off the coast of Alaska in which 33 whaling ships became trapped in Arctic ice to be abandoned, which greatly affected the American whaling industry. The Great Chicago Fire occurred October 8th through the 10th of 1871, which killed approximately 300 people, destroying about 3.3 square miles of the city and over 17,000 structures leaving more than 100,000 residents homeless. The Pishtigo Fire was a forest fire that occurred on October 8, 1871 in northeast Wisconsin, burning about 1.2 million acres, killing between 1,500 to 2,500 people. In 1871, the National Rifle Association was founded and the rowing machine, or indoor rower, was invented. Also, the famous Christian hymn, Onward Christian Soldiers, was written in 1865 by Sabine Baring Gold and composed by Arthur Sullivan in 1871. In 1872, the first patent list was issued by the U.S. Patent Office. Yellowstone National Park becomes the world's first national park. A 7.4 to 7.9 earthquake shakes Lone Pine, California, causing about $250,000 in damage and killing 27 people. In 1872, the first Montgomery Ward catalog was issued and the Great Boston Fire of 1872 occurred, which was Boston's largest fire in history, consuming about 65 acres downtown. 776 buildings, causing 73.5 million in damage, equivalent to about $1.5 billion today, and killing at least 30 people. In 1873, the California Penal Code went into effect, and the U.S. Congress enacted the Comstock Law, which made it illegal to send lewd, obscene, immoral, or indecent publications through the mail. In 1873, President Ulysses S. Grant begins his second term, and slavery is abolished on the island of Puerto Rico. 
The Coinage Act of 1873 demonetized silver to move the nation towards the gold standard. The Panic of 1873 was a financial crisis triggering a depression in both Europe and North America lasting from 1873 to about 1879. Also in 1873, P.T. Barnum's Circus, the greatest show on earth, launches in New York City. Also, earmuffs, silos, and jeans are invented. Finally, in 1873, the famous classic cowboy song, Home on the Range, was written by Brewster M. Higley. In 1874, Hawaii signed a treaty with the United States granting exclusive trading rights. The first public zoo opened in Philadelphia. The United States Greenback Party was established, and the automated fire sprinkler, the spork, and ice cream soda were invented. In 1875, the Civil Rights Act of 1875 was passed guaranteeing all citizens regardless of color access to public schools, theaters, cemeteries, churches, and other accommodations. President Grant authorized the issue of the 20-cent piece, and the Page Act of 1875 was passed, which prohibited the recruitment of laborers from China, Japan, or any other Asian country, essentially one of the first major laws to restrict immigration in the United States. Also in 1875, Albert's swarm of locusts devastated the western United States. In 1875, the biscuit cutter and the electric dental drill was invented, and Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto No. 1 premiered in Boston. In 1876, John Hopkins University was founded in Baltimore, Maryland. The first official World's Fair begins as the United States celebrates 100 years since the Declaration of Independence was signed. The Battle of Little Bighorn, or Custer's Last Stand, was fought June 25th and 26th of 1876, with General George Armstrong Custer leading the 7th Cavalry Regiment and Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull leading the Native American forces. This battle resulted in deaths of up to 50 Native Americans and about 270 soldiers from the 7th Cavalry Regiment. The Brooklyn Theater fire occurred on December 5, 1876, killing at least 278 people. Also in 1876, Colorado was admitted as the 38th state and the first cremation in the U.S. takes place. The synthesizer and the airbrush was invented, and Alexander Graham Bell was awarded a U.S. patent for the telephone. In 1877, Rutherford B. Hayes is sworn in as 19th President of the United States. The first Westminster Kennel Club dog show opens May 8, 1877 in New York City, and the Washington Post is founded. Also in 1877, the phonograph and district heating was invented, and Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake premiered in Moscow, Russia. In 1878, minting of the Morgan Silver Dollar began, and the Posse Comitatus Act was signed into law by President Rutherford B. Hayes, limiting the powers of the federal government in use of the military to enforce domestic policies within the United States. Also in 1878, a yellow fever epidemic began in New Orleans, and the bolometer and free water jet turbine were invented. Also, the Hawaiian folk song, Aloha Oi, is written by Lili Ukalami, the princess of the Hawaiian kingdom at the time. In 1879, the Constitution of California was ratified, and the greenback dollar is valued the same as gold for the first time since the Civil War. Also, the United States Geological Survey was created. Milk is sold in glass bottles, 
and Thomas Edison tested the first practical electric light bulb. In 1879, the paper and cardboard carton was invented, as well as the cash register. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be interesting. For more videos, please like and subscribe. Also, I would like to give you the opportunity to try handmade bar soap from Prairie Scent Company, my small business in California. If you are interested, please click the link in the description and you will be led to Prairie Scent Company's website to shop. Thank you. Keep on collecting and have a great day.